Hello and welcome to Weekly Insights. Today we have with us Tarun Sarin, who is the Managing Director of Sun Life Global Solutions. Hi, Nick. Tarun. Hi, Nika. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, so much. Thank you for having us here. Tarun, uh, in the last few years, there has been a consistent rise in the number of GCCs in India. Till last year, it was about 1,600 and supposed to go up to 1,900 by 2025. What do you think, what are the factors that have led to, that have made India such a favorite destination for GCCs? The way I like to think about that is that uh, we have been, when I say we, India, has been on this journey for over four decades. And over this time, we have just matured in terms of uh, GCCs. When I say matured, I mean is it's been a wonderful journey of leadership in products and platforms, in being able to deliver in an excellent fashion, understanding multiple cultures and nuances, because that's sometimes required in the products and services that you deliver. And more importantly, I think even as a nation now, we are much more digital savvy. Uh, and digital savviness is not only in the realm of GCCs or only the services companies or only the Indian multinationals. You see that in the UPI, the payment systems, you see that in the UID. So even as a nation, I think we are a lot about innovation. Uh, we are a lot about talent. We are a lot about talent that is ambitious. And I'm personally very proud of that. And we are a talent also who wants to do something, right? It's people are ambitious, they want to do something, they want to get some things done. And I think that's all, all of this is, all of these factors are fueling the GCC journey to the future as well. And I think recently in the last few years, especially there's more attention from the government and, you know, GCC story is more in the newspapers and, you know, it's contributing 1% or so to the GDP. Yeah, we are debating what the exact numbers are, but still it's growing. So I think the story has been strong. And uh, my point of view is that the story is only getting stronger uh, because all the factors which started the GCC, I would say, um, era in India, four decades or so ago, you could argue, are just getting stronger and stronger. Unless there's something lurking in the corner that tells us differently, I think this is just going to be an amazing, amazing location for many companies across the world to be able to take into account the talent, the leadership uh, that exists here and further fuel their own purpose, the purpose every, com every company has. So, so I think it's a strong story, uh, getting stronger. Um, you have some niche talent that works in the GCC space as well. And in fact, the design of many GCCs is really about niche talent, niche from a business standpoint, niche from a business operations standpoint, and niche from a tech standpoint. So I'm going to work at a conference of all of this for, for the purpose of your respective company. Talking about tech and talent, what are some of the trends that you foresee will shape the future of GCCs in India, specifically when it comes to technology adoption and talent management? I, I, you know, I, I, I see a few trends and then I like to see a few trends uh, add on to this journey as well. Uh, the trends that I see already, Anika, is uh, number one, obviously there's a vastness of talent. There's depth of talent as well, which probably could argue did not exist as much four decades ago or three decades ago. So you have depth. You have people who actually want to be, for example, developer or they want to be in AI or they want to be in a certain technology for a longer period of time. So they want to master it, right? And there are people who want to master certain domains as well. You see that as a big trend happening in India in general and even other geographies in which I'm privileged to operate in. So I think all of that is continuing. There's a vastness of talent. The depth of talent is increasing as well. And I see that just the mindset of the talent is going to be the other factor that's going to help us. Uh, people want to own products. They want to own, for example, the journey to the cloud. They want to be accountable for you know, leveraging AI or Gen AI for your respective company. And I like to add this trend. I like to see more and more of this trend happen. Uh, personally speaking is I would really want India, since we're talking about India for, for the moment, India to also be a trendsetter in terms of culture and values. I think this is important for us that as we gain more leadership, not only that we have companies of talent in India, but as you gain more leadership, whether it's products, whether it's platforms, whether it's even managing a wide workforce, which our other point of view, I think workforce should manage itself. This is a new world and it should be assisted by managers. But as we gain this leadership responsibility, I think it's, it's our responsibility to hold the purpose of our respective companies in such a beautiful way and also in a way that advances the culture of our own companies. Personal ambition would be that 
we we take a rightful place in the world and uh, people also i don't want any country to be behind people also look at india for culture and how to run a great company how to be a truly amazing place to work how to be a place of joy how to be a place where innovation is thriving and happening at scale and then gccs also have a big role in terms of the ecosystem and leveraging the ecosystem i think that's a newer i would say trend last couple of decades i would argue that you've seen as part of the ecosystem startups also really you know coming of age in this part of the world uh, so i think as gcc leveraging that as well for respected companies or products or solutions again to take the missions of a company forward is something upon us upon us as leaders so it's not only the talent that exists within our company it's not only talent that we want from across the country to hopefully choose to work with us but it's also about startups it's also about academia as well and i would like to say that depending upon the company you are in and the purpose of the company what the company exists for partnering with initiatives that help uh, the country financial inclusion is an example or education could be another example uh, is also of, of utmost importance because you have to play the rightful role in the communities you belong to right so for example my role is that of uh, leading philippines from a sun life global solutions center perspective uh, leading india as well we are venturing into vietnam as well and the thought process and the responsibility that i carry and my team carries is how to be relevant to the society in the philippines you know what are some of the c whether csr or your own effort what can we really do for that part of the world for that geo what can we do for this part of the world where we are sitting in india as well so i think you have to be a complete company if i can use that word uh, and we have to be leaders that are global minded and uh, no matter where you sit whether you sit in india or philippines you know i have a senior leader we've just uh, on board in the philippines for the past few months i expect her to think about india i expect her to think about vietnam and i expect her to think about the entire company just like i expect myself to do that and my and my team so i think it's is we living in a era of purpose oriented leadership so we have to do justice to it we have to raise us to it and and the rest of the talent depends upon us if us as senior you know i would say relatively senior it's not like we are too senior but relatively senior leaders if you don't uh take additional accountability our, our our teams cannot be as empowered and today team want to work in a very empowered empowered culture where they can take decisions where where nobody is macro managing them they're managing themselves actually uh so that's the future i see that's the future of on uh, hyper hyper empowerment then how do you see you, you just spoke about driving value and culture how do you how do you think that sun life global solutions is driving value to sun life you know our purpose as uh, <clears throat> sun life is really the well-being of our client when i say well-being it's uh, about helping them with lifetime financial security and solutions around that or advice around that or both around that and also helping them live healthier lives uh that is really our purpose right so uh, we see the world from that lens from the lens of this this purpose uh sunlight global solutions towards that is a microcosm of sunlight and i see that with a lot of responsibility that rides on me and my team when i say microcosm it's not really about showing us us in a bigger light than we are it's about thinking about what can we do for canada us asia asset management and corporate functions these are the pillars of the company so very fortunately we have work that we do uh technology work uh digital leadership work for all of the pillars of our company uh we also do run operations uh we also have a client care center in manila as well that takes almost 5 million calls from clients and as you can appreciate you know many of our clients call us during the key points and defining moments in their lives so it's a responsibility that we carry we are furthering the purpose of sun life and we are furthering our purpose together as one team through all the work that we do whether it's technology whether it's operations whether it's taking the client calls we also have an actuarial team uh in sunlight global solutions and more importantly we want to innovate around problems that need to be solved maybe sometimes they have not been solved so so every year in fact we do this every quarter but every year we have a flagship innovation event that basically talks about who are the two or three or four problems as an enterprise that we should go after mm. uh, recently we had uh, innovation even we had about 120 teams formed uh, we included about 30 startups there were also squads to go after problems around financial planning for example for problems around health as well 
So it's not only doing the delivery what the projects that we have all decided we must do, which basically means providing solutions, services to end clients. And we have 85 million end clients and growing uh, across the 28 geographies in which you operate. But it's also about what have we not <laughs> provided for yet? What are the new solutions we should be uh, you know, looking at and providing as well? So that's what, you know, when I think about innovation, I think about innovation from generally from the client perspective, but obviously we have innovation in the back room, back office, for example, we have innovation from within the company, we have a team called Digital Force that basically automates, we are at about 93-94% of automation of all of our internal processes as well, and that makes employees life easy. So, so ultimately I think uh, our job and my job as a leader to keep, you know, to keep the purpose of the company, to advance the purpose of the company, meaning clients happy, their well-being taken care of and then keeping our employees happy and the well-being taken care of. Everything is kind of in the middle and community. So that's how I see my role as an Uber role. For that, we have to do everything, you know, that, that we can, uh, whether it's innovation, whether it's transformation, uh, removing tech debt, for example. Uh, but that's how I see my job, you know, in, in very simple terms. People who depend upon us, the people who count upon us, we should be taking great care of them. Actually, even in our personal life, but same thing in the professional life. You spoke about innovations. What are some of the technological and AI-driven um, innovations that Sun Life Global in, in, uh, Solutions has introduced in the larger scope of GCCs? Yeah, I think uh, uh, multiple, right? So I think if you look at Gen AI in particular, uh, I would like to believe that we are still in the experimentation stage, meaning we are still discovering the art of the possible. But along this experimentation and discovery stage, we have been able to launch certain solutions. Uh, we have been able to launch Metaverse to hire students in the Philippines, for example. You know, they can get a great immersion of the company in a, in a, in a metaverse, metaverse kind of a universe. Um, we're looking at knowledge, knowledge management solutions that are driven by Gen AI. Uh, as well, at any given point, we have multiple experiments going on from a Gen, Gen AI perspective. We have catalogs that our clients can now see through a Gen AI chat GPT kind of interface as well. Uh, before, for years, we have had something internal to the company called Amber that basically checks the pulse of employees depending upon their service anniversaries or they completed six months in the organization. And I get a report of it as to how they answer the question, the mood indicator and so on and so forth. Um, I think we're going to see a fundamental shift in the way enterprises and organizations are run uh, as you go forward. Uh, I, I, I just, I'm just, just going to hypothesize or guess five to ten years from now, I think we'll be seeing a much more intelligent company, no matter who you are. Uh, we're going to be touched by Gen AI and AI. I just hope we can do that faster than later. We obviously have to uh, take care of the ethical aspects and the security aspects of Gen AI, for example. We, we should absolutely make sure that it's all trustworthy. Uh, there's no artificiality of AI, pun intended. Uh, but I, I do believe, and I'll put this, I do believe natural intelligence far supersedes artificial intelligence. So, um, I do believe that a job, <clears throat> and I say this a little tongue-in-cheek because it doesn't apply to every economy. Every economy is a different stage. But I think a job that can be done by a computer should actually be done by a computer. A job that can be done by an algorithm should actually be done by an algorithm so that people like us are challenged and we do work which is of a higher order, whether it's envisioning uh, a new future, uh, whether it's envisioning uh, a new technology and so on and so forth. That's really my belief for uh, how I see it and um, I think there's so much in our personal lives as it is professional lives that this is going to be touched by AI in particular. But I think there are other technologies on the horizon which we haven't yet totally embraced. Quantum, I think, is not that far. I think uh, uh, having a point of view on how quantum computing can change how we work is, uh, is a worthy exploration as well. Um, so, yeah, so I think the way we are looking at innovation is some of these are, you could argue, solutions looking for problems, you know, Gen AI, GPT, you could argue, but uh, ultimately innovation should help the company, uh, should help the client, should help people who depend upon us, uh, as well, should help, an, uh, should help an employee. We are looking at uh, AI helping our developers. We believe that 30 to 40 percent of our developers' time can be cut short or made more productive by the use of uh, things like Copilot um, the, that AWS offers. 
so so i think that's a is a revolution you know, happening as we as we sit here talking talking about it and uh, my desire would be to see a lot of that come come about very very quickly and i think it's is coming at us quickly it's happening quickly as well and we have to be up on the, on the curve as as a company um and we have to make sure that we know how to leverage it as well we do we can't really learn we can't make it a wild wild west uh you know uh, whether it's in terms of security or in terms of the truthfulness and the integrity of these uh, of the solution that an ai may may offer so i think in many cases human the loop maybe makes more sense as well but the pro- an average productivity of an average employee like me should definitely go up and have quantum leaps no pun intended uh, with gen ai so i'm looking forward to that i'm not there yet so but i know i need to be tarun so far we have spoken about the bright side of the story if i were to ask you about some of the talent and business continuity risks that may hamper the gcc growth story yeah and how can it be mitigated yeah i think there are many uh, many risks one can uh, depending upon which you know which time uh, you're sitting in but i'll offer you a little bit of a different uh, angle to this uh, the risk i see as a gcc if i can call myself a gcc leader for the purpose of uh, uh, this discussion i see some existential risks which are a little different from what one may generally think about so number one i think as leaders in gcc space uh, not only heads of gcc but the executive team the leadership team we must absolutely understand the potential of since talking about india about india uh, about our own company and make sure we're leveraging it to the to the hilt vast amount it's almost a moral responsibility and i tell you why i say that vast amount of talent are coming and joining the workforce in india uh, whether you take number of people who graduate from stem whether you take people who are already in the workforce and growing i think the leaders such as myself have almost a moral responsibility i always have a almost have a community responsibility to make sure the jobs are enriching new models of empowerment are being implemented micromanagement belongs in the bunker if at all it belongs anywhere it's about the harnessing the minds and the hearts and the powerful talent that we have in this region whether it's philippines whether it's india whether it's other regions as well so i think that's number one the risk is that if we don't have great global roles if you don't have global accountability if you don't take accountability for a company's purpose we're not going to be able to create those high enriching jobs so i think that's something that we have to absolutely do second we absolutely have to flex the innovation muscle i think it is upon us to innovate faster than the cost arbitrage <laughs> uh the innovation curve of uh, of a, of india as a, as an example has to be higher uh, the value curve has to be higher and i'm using innovation as a proxy to value uh, has to be higher and keep on going up and i think we are there it's not like we are not on the curve we are but we got to keep on making sure the cu- the curve is a steep one so i think the second it's not a risk but it's uh, if we don't leverage the opportunity it becomes a risk it becomes a threat so i would offer those two actually both of them are about making sure that our value is increasing at multiple uh you know significant uh, significantly exponentially um and then no always the geopolitical risk there are other kind of risks i think but uh, these two i think is something that that's in our core we can do something about it directly as well there are business continuity and other risks that uh, uh i think i think we have for gccs especially that are scaled up uh, leveraging different cities maybe even different geos for example indian gccs or india based gccs exploring something we did exploring other locations also sort of india if it makes sense for the company i think is important so when i say global minded leadership or global leadership that's exactly what i mean you do what's right for the company you do what right for the country or the countries that you are privileged to serve so you got to work at the intersection of both and if you don't harness the value and the talent of that country or the ecosystem i think <laughs> you may not think of this as traditional risk to me it's a risk uh, sitting where i am sitting yeah. Tarun, my last question. We recently celebrated Women's Day. How would you say that you are committed to the to driving diversity, equity, and inclusion? Yes. It's an like global solution. Very a topic very close to my heart has always been. So, personally, number one, a a human has incredible potential. We are not all equal, equal, but we are all equitable. We all have different potentials and gifts to offer to the world. I really, truly believe that. I really believe that. In fact, sometimes when I get the most irate is when i think somebody is selling himself or herself or other maybe it's a transgender short 
uh, as well. So, so I deeply believe in human potential because I believe in my own potential. So I know me, I know me as a human first, and I know myself as a man. You know, and uh, so, so I absolutely think that the topic of diversity, equity, and inclusivity should actually rest at some point, hopefully during my lifetime, because it is just the way we will be. Uh, we have a gender-neutral washroom set up uh, in SLGS, for example. We have people who are now coming up in the open saying they're neither men nor women. So one is diversity from a standpoint of gender and one is diversity from a, st uh, from a standpoint of uh, orientation and one is diversity from a standpoint of not being associated with the gender. I think uh, as just human beings, not even as a leader, I think just being, as just human beings, one has to recognize all facets of human expression of human beings as well. So we deeply believe in it at Sun Life. We are one of the boards that general balanced. Sun Life board is general balanced. Uh, most of my senior stakeholders are women. I report to a woman leader as well. Um, at some point, I think out of my seven or five or six uh, senior stakeholders, almost all were women uh, as well. So Sun Life itself is a very diverse company. And then SLGS, we are on that path of making, making sure that we are playing our part to move ahead on diversity, equitability, inclusivity, having more women in senior roles as well, having, if, if it so happens during our lifetime, having transgenders in the workforce, uh, having people who are differently able. We had something called the Pride Bazaar that we organized where we had uh, small medium enterprises who are run by LGBTQIA folks who came in and you know, showcase their products and so on and so forth. So I think there's an awareness piece to it and there's an inclusion piece to it. And uh, recently we included something called belonging. And that is again very close to our hearts as a team. Uh, we want everyone in Sun Life you know, uh, to, to belong, uh, to belong to the culture that we care about. It, and uh, culture has four parameters, you know, it's about care. It's about authenticity. Uh, and it's about inspiring and it's about making an impact and a positive change in society. So that really is a culture. I really truly believe it and sometimes to an extreme and I struggle uh, as to how to make more thing, good things happen uh, as well. Uh, but it is very core to who we are. We are doing great in certain regions. Philippines is amazing in terms of having the uh, gender diversity and even non-gender diversity. It's, it's you know, much better than we have in, in, in India. But uh, we are on the right path uh, in terms of uh, inclusion of you know, differently able people as well and so on and so forth. So uh, it's really from my heart. I, I really want SLGS and my team is with me. We all really want SLGS to be an amazing diverse place. And we don't want to talk too much about it. Although I've spoken about it because it's coming from my heart, but we don't want to talk so much about it. I think it's just natural. It's just something we should be doing anyway. It should have happened long time ago. <laughs> So, so uh, help us, you know, uh, let people know that we, we, we care for everybody and anybody who cares for the purpose of our clients, we're going to embrace that person here. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.